Welcome back. United Health Group shares dropped 3.3% today after the insurer spent more than expected on patient care as COVID, the flu, and RSV made the rounds. So what does this mean for how investors should think about the future of health care? Well, to answer that question in today's timeout here on Overtime, I want to introduce you to Adrian Aoun, founder and CEO of Forward. I met Adrian in Silicon Valley more than a decade ago when he was at Google working on special projects, reporting to then-CEO Larry Page. Adrian's got a background in artificial intelligence, and when his older brother had some health challenges, he looked into technology as a solution. You know, on a Monday, I'm like solving AI, and on Tuesday, I'm like watching like you know doctors in my brother's exam room like stand over him with like post-it notes, and I'm like, guys, where's where's the AI? He quickly realized like healthcare is a pile of crap, but worse than that, it's not even an evenly distributed pile of crap. Like there's about eight billion people on the planet; less than two billion of them have access to anything you and I would call real form of care. So then I said, okay, but this this seems solvable. Adrian left Google and started Forward, which up to this point has been a boutique tech-driven doctor's office. Now, over the last couple months, though, Forward's begun rolling out a new concept that he thinks could eventually change the cost equation in healthcare. It's called a care pot. So imagine a standalone room in a mall or office building, no people in it, then you walk in, it takes your vitals, gives you a treatment plan or prescription. Seriously. You walk up to it, you unlock it with your phone, and immediately it's like, hello, John, welcome to Ford. Please step inside. And as you do, it basically loads up a bunch of different applications for you to play with. Let's say you choose something like the body scan app. This is pretty cool. It tells you to stand still, it rotates you in a circle, takes a whole bunch of readings, shows you the results on the screen, explains them to you, and then gives you whatever treatment makes sense, whether it's prescription or something else. Let's say you choose heart health. This one's pretty awesome. It actually opens a tray and hands you a sensor, shows you how to hold that sensor against your heart, and then again, takes the results, shows them to you on the screen, explains them, and then gives you a treatment, a prescription, something else. Okay, I pushed back. Really, a prescription from AI. But here's the potentially powerful overall idea. So at Forward, Adrian is trying to take stubbornly expensive services, like an annual checkup, and turn them into tech hardware and software, which tend to get dramatically cheaper over time. So look at the trajectory of the smartphone. The tradable takeaway here, possibly, there's money in using tech to lower the cost of care. Apple's trying pieces of that with the Apple Watch. Medical device makers are with their products, too. We'll see if the prognosis is good. And here to talk about that a bit, Bertha Coombs. Uh, th there are a lot of attempts out there to lower costs. What do you think of not just forward, but this idea that devices, if we can offload expensive services and make them into devices, that could expand access to care and reduce the cost? It's something that's really already happening, and I think all of the big players are looking at it. You know, as you look at what they call hospital at home, all of the big insurers, they have home care that they've invested in, whether it's United Health or uh, Humana or now, you know, CVS, which invested in a company that they acquired last year in order to do this. And they have devices to help monitor people. So a lot of that is helping. What Forward is doing is great for those of us who are into the quantified self, right? We're healthier. We want to take a look. We want to measure things. But when you're talking about people who have complex issues, older people. And if you've ever cared for an older relative, you know that things can change like that. You know, just a UTI can really upset things very, very quickly. You really need more hands-on. So telehealth is really important. That's really great. And you really do want to talk to a person because sometimes you really want to be able to discuss and ask questions. And when I talk but to Bertha, my friends who are doctors... yeah. It isn't, isn't the trick here going to be, if it works at all, getting the right balance of when you have to talk to a person versus when you don't, the types of care that you can deliver you know, through a broadly accessible, you know, cheap location versus even the types of devices that you have to send to older patients or people with specific orthopedic issues and let them use at home, but getting that data on a regular basis to, to deliver better care at a lower cost, isn't, isn't that part of the trick? That is part of the trick, but you also have to think about the clinician at the center of it. And, you know, we keep putting all of these desires 
of what we want to do and to be monitored and to be able to have someone send us suggestions. We're putting that on doctors, on, on pharmacists, and they're a bit overwhelmed. Now, AI is helping them with that regard, and particularly when you talk about patients who have specific complex needs, they are focusing more on them. But at the end of the day, it's not going to solve everything. There's always going to need to be a human contact there. I mean, you look at issues like, like maternal health. The thing that really helps in maternal health for women who are underserved is to have an advocate, to have right. a doula, to have you know someone there who understands the process and can advocate for them and can also guide them through the steps of what to expect. And you we'll can't see do that with an app. If in the meantime, at least the apps and perhaps devices can help. Bertha Coombs, thank you.